Hello. Hey. Um, um, there's two questions I would like to ask. The first one is, um, what is the best piece of advice you've got when you started your career, either as a director or as an actor? Right. And the second one is, what is the book you've offered, offered most as a gift in your entire life? Oh, I, I didn't hear the second part. The, what is you, the book? The book. The book that you've offered as a gift to your friends or um, in in your life. All oh, right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I um, um, I got a lot of uh, a good acting note. It was actually in the theater, but it actually served me well in film. And he said, uh, "This guy, I was at, I was doing a piece." And this girl was doing a piece from Chekhov. And uh, I was just her dummy. I just had to react to the stuff she was saying. And after the exercise was over, the acting teacher said, you are great. He says, it's when you open your mouth, you get into trouble. <laughs> and uh, I thought, thank you. It was like a backhanded compliment. But uh, um, I remember when I was going to first direct stuff, I was scared because, you know, I was really nervous. I didn't know whether I could do it. And you're just stepping up to the plate for the first time. So I talked to friends of mine who I admired. And, uh, you know, I talked to Peter Weir, and because uh, he's, he's a great director. And I worked with him a couple of times. I said, I got to direct something. I said, I'm scared. He said, you better be. <laughs> like, like, it really didn't make me feel better at all. I said, cut it out. And uh, he said, no, truly, all you have to do is say action and cut. <laughs> of course, that's not true. But um, um, it was interesting to talk to Clint Eastwood, actually, who'd just done Unforgiven, which I think was one of his better ones, you know. And uh, he, uh, I, I called him up on the phone. He's the tall one. And he's, very, he's a very nice guy, too. He's like, I said, Clint, I'm scared. He said, don't be scared. Like that. No. He said, somewhere in your subliminal animal brain, you got all that shit stored. And I said, okay. He said, it'll all come out when you need it. And he was right, you know. Because you kept, you kept storing things away. And I'm one of those guys that, um, for reasons I don't understand, uh, because I think it is mostly subconscious, uh, that as you go along on the journey of life, you see something, or hear something, or an object, or whatever it happens to be, a story, a fragment, just something you observed, you'll say, I want to keep that, and you have a box for it, and you put it in a box here, and, uh, and you go around and you have different boxes in this room, and you just, you, you just store these fragments of things in, in boxes. And then uh, one day it's time you think, I think I'll take that box off the shelf and look at it, and there's like 48 things in it. And you go, eh. and you, were, you weren't aware that you were putting these things in that box, but they all kind of go together. And then you, you kind of open the box and there's a bunch of crap in there and you go, hey, and it's this thing, you know, and it's subconscious completely. And it might take 10, 12 years, you know. Like I had a, a thought in English class when I was 17. That was like, uh, I was learning about the English language. And they say, well, it comes from a low German dialect and all this sort of, and then the, the, the Angles, the Saxons, the Jews, the Vikings, all this, you know, and all mixed with French and that Latin. And it's like, and then you get English, you know. I'm like, oh, that's pretty interesting. So it's a, uh, so I imagined a film when I was 17, with Vikings only speaking in some kind of low guttural German that would scare the shit out of people, because it scared me to think about that, if they were coming to my place, you know. And um, of course, I then said to myself, I, I don't know how to make a film, I'm 17, I'm in school, I know nothing about it. But it's still, that instinct to do that was really strong. I don't know why, it's just a weird, weird thing. Um, the best advice, the best practical advice came from a guy called Steve Miner, and he said, always do overs. And he's right, you know, just always get the frame a little dirty with someone to always do overs. So I do a lot of them, it works.
Amos. 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 Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Sounds like you're dead. 